After last month's crazy FF15 challenge, I think it's time for something a bit more straightforward. Prepare to battle rampaging dragons, crippling social anxiety and your ex-girlfriend as we ask ourselves. Can your party members beat Dragon Quest XI? That means in battle we may only choose the defend option, while all party members are controlled by the AI. And since this game gets a bad rap for being too easy, we'll be activating all of the draconian quests, which are optional difficulty modifiers that could each be a challenge run on their own. But more on those in a minute. Finally, as always, no glitches, hacks or mods. Let's rock. We start by naming ourselves No Attack, have a panicky meltdown trying to speak to the very first NPC we find, and make our way up the tour for a coming of age ceremony. We're soon attacked by three slime enemies who hit pretty hard and Gemma refuses to do anything but stand idle. Thankfully Sandy here can give them a jolly good thwacking though she wastes every other turn just barking at one of them, which acts as a stun. Wait, is, is Sandy a male or a female? Hmm. Hang on one sec. Nope, it doesn't have its own Dragon Quest wiki page, and the name Sandy is unisex, so that's no help. Apparently the name means Man's Defender though, which is pretty on point. Anyway, Gemma keeps our health topped up and it's soon over. That's 6 XP and 6 gold in the bag. While we fight through the rest of this tutorial section, let's talk about each of these draconian quest restrictions that are hardwired into this playthrough. First up, no shopping. Yep. All shopkeepers in the game will refuse to serve us, meaning gold is basically useless. Next up, the game prevents us from equipping all armour, accessories and shields. It's weapons only all the way. Next is reduced XP. In fact, if Noah or another party member is too highly leveled, they will gain zero XP. This is a very harsh restriction that will prevent us from excess grinding by just farming low level mobs. Next up, all enemies are buffed compared to a regular playthrough. The game stays pretty vague about this, but people online think it's about a 20 to 25% buff to their stats. Shy Pox and Super Shy Pox force all allies to randomly miss turns in battle, as well as fail to speak to NPCs due to crippling social anxiety. Townsfolk Talk Tripe causes NPCs to sometimes give silly dialogue instead of their regular dialogue, which is pretty funny, but it can get annoying when you're trying to talk to a priest to save the game. Last up is what I like to call the Persona Rule. If the main character falls, it's GG. Individually, these don't seem too bad, but I'm sure they'll stack up. I'm most worried about the no armor rule, since it also affects our accessories, as well as the zero experience thing if you're over leveled, because this will flat out prevent us from just grinding through our problems. After a super long battle against these two smogs, we hit level 3, Sandy runs off and Gemma compliments us for how strong we were. I knew you were tough, but crikey. Um, I, uh, I, I actually, uh, didn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> we make it to the top to get a look at the beautiful world of Erdria. Oh, the world of Erdria. Or oh, Erdria, sorry, I thought it was uh, pronounced Erdria. Oh, sorry. Sing it across all Erdria. Oh, it was Erdria, right, okay. Take this map of Erdria with you. Will you guys make your bloody minds up on how you pronounce literally the name of the planet? Whew, okay. Okay, I am calm. I am calm. Oh, for God's sake! We've arrived at the village of Cobblestone, and after smashing up some barrels and vases, or vases for the American viewers, we find a Seed of Agility. This is a fantastic item which permanently boosts the agility of one character. Might be best to save that for now. Since we're not allowed to equip a shield in our offhand, we decide to swap over to the Cobblestone Greatsword, as it offers a 1% chance to parry, making it marginally better than our previous weapon. We're given money and told to visit the local shop, but since the game won't allow that, we say our goodbyes and head north to Heliodor. 
The problem is that we are alone, so any random encounter here could cause a massive problem for us. We just dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge around them all and soon arrive at our destination. And damn, this place is gorgeous! We accept this kid's request to find her cat and begin smashing up the place for items. While we have some time, I should say that I have quite a big confession to make. So stick around because I think you'll find it quite amusing. <laughs> we grab the rooftop mini medal, return the cat to the kid who has a shockingly sinister face, find a seed of sorcery for a permanent magic stat boost, again we'll save that one for later, find more equipment that we can't use and yet have no reason to sell, nab yet another mini medal and get double crossed by the king and carted off to be thrown into the dungeon prison. Here we meet our first actual party member, Eric, get excessively embarrassed talking to a literal corpse and do an impression of me passing a salad bar. Hey, they don't call it a challenge run for nothing. <laughs> oh, we have to go that way, right, okay, sorry Eric. After a bit of mom telling us we have Crash Bandicoot at home, we make a rational decision to throw ourselves off a thousand foot cliff. That's about 305 metres for the EU viewers, or either for the UK viewers. Yeah, apparently we swapped over in 1971, but we still haven't quite decided what we want to do. Anyway, we check out Eric's character builder skill tree and buy a node for knives. In hindsight, maybe we should have given him the boomerang instead, so that he'd be able to do AoE damage, but specking into the single target attacks should be more helpful against bosses. We're at the Heladorian foothills and have a bit more freedom now, so let's get some combat going! When not skipping turns from embarrassment, Eric currently hits for about 8-10 to 10 damage per turn, which is enough to wipe out these fright bulbs with very little effort. Since we're not allowed to heal though, we have to rest up in between every fight, and we might as well save the game each time while we're there. No problem though, Dragon Quest is an easy game series, right? There's no threats here, we should easily be able to walk through this entire challenge ru- Wait, what? <laughs> yep, our second non-tutorial fight of the game against a weak low level mob, and we got wrecked! Looks like we're gonna have to avoid those bodkin archers for a while and stick to farming those fright bulbs. We explore the area and find a Seed of Strength, which we immediately use on Eric to boost his damage output. Nice! And soon afterwards... Ah, uh, damn. That's another enemy type that we can't beat yet. We keep grinding, and you know how I said earlier about how I had a big confession to make? Well, ha <laughs> ha! I'll tell you soon. You serious? We hit level 5, learning heal, which obviously we're not allowed to use, but let's have a look at these skill trees. Sadly, everything in range is either an attack skill, a damage buff, or an increased pep chance, which we don't need yet. We're just going to stockpile our points, because we might need them for the counter ability later in the game. Stump Chump is next, and again, we get absolutely obliterated. Oh, I'll get you back, you branchy git. One day I'll be the root of all your problems, oh yes, you can log that. All your worries will stem from me, you better believe it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Eric's level is as high as it can go for now, but before we move on, we need to get rid of that annoying copyright thingy in the corner. Yep, if you record footage of this game on a PlayStation, then Square Enix automatically stamps that over the top. Wait, wait one second, uh... Ah, much better. Haha, <laughs> good old capture cards, eh? <laughs> Anywho, we're now in the slums of Heliodor and have been told to borrow this dog to distract the guard. But the kid will only let us borrow it if we give her a couple of items, one of which needs to be purchased from a shop. But thankfully, there's a workaround. If you go up this ladder and follow the wooden balconies to this rope, you can tightrope across it, duck under some houses, and hidden around the far corner right next to the treasure chest containing... Uh... Um, well, luckily we can't equip these, but I don't think it would be very hygienic to do so anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this kid will tell us to ask the innkeeper to forge a note from Roxy the Dancer, which she is more than happy to do. This is a nice little alternative way of getting through here that I bet a lot of players didn't even know about. 
Awesome. After a bit of uh, whatever this is, we're back at the foothills. Oh, a new enemy type. Let's give it a shot. Wait, four of them? Oh, come on, be nice. We haven't saved the game in a while. Oh, RN Jesus, hear my plea. Please save us from these floating gits. I really don't want to have to play the past half hour of the game again. Each lampling is hitting Noah for three and Eric for six. But if he falls, then we have no damage output, so we're as good as dead anyway. We get down to two lamps, but we have another moment of crippling embarrassment, resulting in us being hit for seven points of damage. This frizz is bound to finish us off. But what, it's out of MP? Yeah, let's go, woo! It tries the same trick a second time, but Eric's having none of it. Job done. Oh, watch out. Oh, that was a close one. Now let's heal and save the bloody game. <laughs> After slicing up a defenseless kitten, we push onto the Mangle Grove and keep dodging everything in sight. They're bound to be way too strong for us right now. Wait, how do you get on the... Uh... Oh, oh, I jump, right, yeah. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. After being trolled by an empty chest, Bruh. we get a weather report from a cow. Yep, you heard that right. But it turns out that it could go one way or the other. <laughs> you thought my puns were bad. <laughs> Behold, the fun size forge. Pop a few raw materials on top, bash them with the porter pounder, and bops your uncle. New equipment. Nice. This thing will let us craft new gear for the party, but obviously only weapons will be useful. We start by grabbing a perfect weapon for Noah, which we won't use because it only deals damage and doesn't offer any passive bonuses, but creating this Divine Dagger plus two for Eric will give him a tasty damage boost. We get smelled by a dog, wow that was a weird mini cutscene, and it begins to follow us around. Don't get too excited though, it won't leave this small area and therefore will not be joining us in any combat. R.I.P. Sandy. We do find more crafting recipes, but it's armour and shields again, so not very helpful to us at all, sadly. Feeling confident with our current setup, we push onto the game's first main story boss, Tricky Devil. It kicks things off with a sizz for massive damage, but Eric is also dealing a fair bit more damage now. We're also getting super lucky by not losing any turns to Shy Pox. On its second turn, it zaps Eric before turning on Noah. We need to kill this thing quick, but it's super tanky. Sadly, yep, we get shot down and sent back to the title screen. This guy is way too tough for us right now, so there's only one thing for it. We need to grind some more! Let's see if we can find an enemy around here anywhere. Oh, your mama, that'll do. Haha! <laughs> Lip's enemies are quite easy to defeat when they're alone, but they can get really tough when forming part of a larger group. Back at the Fun Forge, we rework Eric's Divine Dagger Plus 2 into a Divine Dagger Plus 3, which is as good as it's going to get for now. There are no better weapons we can give him, so let's try that boss again. This time, we've waited until we're both in pepped up status for the various stat buffs, but nevertheless, Eric is dead in seconds and we just wait for the mercy kill. Third attempt, and here's our setup going in. Eric has the best weapon possible and we're both level 7 now. The Tricky Devil is quick off the mark, using its initial sizz before we've even had a chance to defend. From there, it exclusively targets Noah down until it's game over again. While I let the next few attempts play out, I think it's time for that confession I mentioned earlier. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my very first playthrough of Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> Now obviously I have no way of proving that besides maybe the dates on these trophy achievements but yeah, I've played a couple of other Dragon Quest games in the past and it kept getting recommended in the comments section of our videos so I was like, sod it, go big or go home. <laughs> so yeah, most of you watching will know a lot more about this game than I do but going into a run completely blind can be really fun sometimes and for that reason I genuinely have no idea if this run is even going to be possible or not. <laughs> Right, we grind to level 9 and come back, but will it be enough to tip things in our favour? Turn 1 and Eric kicks things off for massive damage, 
and it says belly scratches us compared to what it was doing before. Eric and the Tricky Devil exchange blows until Eric gets low, in which it thankfully fires its next attack at Noah. Come on Eric, finish the thing! But nah, the Sizz finishes Eric off and we're not far behind. Clearly the lack of healing is a major problem. I get the feeling that this battle is meant to act as a healing tutorial of sorts, given what Eric says at the start of each attempt. With this in mind, we change Eric's AI tactics to focus on healing. After all, we have plenty of healing items in our bag and I'm happy for him to burn through them all if it means getting past this guy. Let's see what happens. Yep, Eric doesn't heal anyone and we get down biases. Okay, how about the show no mercy mode? That must maximize his offensive strategy, right? So we can end the fight ASAP? Well, it doesn't look any different and we're soon dead again. All right, let's see here. We need 570 and 442 XP to level up. Sadly though, all enemies are too low level to award any XP now. Except for, you guessed it, the lips. All right, two down. How many experience points is that? Wait, 18? <sighs> yep, this is gonna take a while. We finally hit level 10 and the lips stop awarding XP because we're now too high level. It seems like level 10 is the highest we can go for now. This is it, this really is the best chance we have against this boss. We cannot get any stronger. We get bad shy pox RNG and Eric isn't landing any criticals, so we're quickly wiped out. We put Eric on mix it up for the next attempt but we still get wiped by the second sizz. But that's when I had an amazing idea. Let's head back to the Fun Forge and upgrade our clothing. That will boost our defenses and help us to survive longer, right? Maybe we can even upgrade the Cobblestone Greatsword to increase the parry chance. This is great news, right? Well, no. The clothing is just in each character's inventory, not actually equipped. And the parry chance does not rise when the Greatsword is upgraded. <sighs> Talk about having good ideas just shot down. Right, we move medicinal herbs into Eric's personal inventory so he can access them and set his AI to prioritize healing again. But does he heal us with the items? Does he, does he, does he frig? Once again, we have perished. Okay, let's see what we've got here. The seed of sorcery is useless since none of us are using magic, so we give Eric 19 medicinal herbs and a strong medicine. He literally cannot hold any more healing items. Focus on healing, you spiky head muppet. <laughs> All right, this is it, people. Our final attempt at this bloody boss. Okay, Whew. come on, we got this. We don't have time to defend the initial Sizz, but it doesn't do too much damage, so that's okay. It goes for Eric next before he realises that his flies are undone, and therefore makes a big scene about it, you crybaby. We're next to be embarrassed, but make up for it by flat out dodging its next attack. Very nice. I don't think we've actually dodged anything before. Tricky Devil's attention stays with Noah, and we both survive the next Sizz with plenty of HP to spare. We're knocked down to 1 HP and Eric's still going on the offensive, but that's when this happens. Yep, the thing can frickin' heal itself. Nah, 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 no way, this ain't happening, people. Okay, future version of me popping in here. Um, I originally ended this video with, nah, it's a fail, sorry everyone. But the day before this was due to go live, I actually did find a way of beating this boss. Oh, trust me, you're gonna love it. So I'm gonna start making part two. See you later, everyone. Cheers. Back at the Fun Forge, we rework Eric's Divine Dagger Plus 2 into a... Into a... Senpai, you should like and subscribe.